How's it going guys? So today we're gonna be talking about the DJI Mavic 3 Pro, the things I love about it, and some things that I don't. So some of the tests that I put this drone through were the active tracking. I rode my one wheel and I was trying to see at each different focal length how well this drone would track me. Now you can't actually do active tracking in the 166 millimeter focal length. You can do the point of interest and the spotlight, which means that it will lock onto you, but you actually have to control and move the drone if you want it to move with you. And the one thing that I found out about that is it honestly doesn't work that great. I would have the drone locked onto me at 166 millimeters and it consistently would lose me. Uh, the point of interest uh, with the 166 millimeter is not that great if you're really close to your subject. If you're pulled back a little bit further, it has a little easier time trying to track you a little bit better. I would just say if you're going to be using the 166 millimeter in the point of interest mode, I would just not be super close to your subject because once it starts to leave the frame a little bit, it has a hard time keeping up with you. Now in terms of the 24 millimeter and the 70 millimeter focal lengths, it worked fantastic. I could do the active track point of interest. You can do all of the things um, that DJI offers in terms of tracking in those two different focal lengths. Uh, I had no problems with it. It was honestly amazing. I love the little touch pad where you can choose which direction you want it to follow you in. So if you want it to be facing directly in front of you or to the side, it tracks you perfectly. And it's almost like it tracks your, like your facial movements too, because I would notice like if I would turn to check on my drone, I would notice that the drone would kind of pivot as I turned my face, which I think is very intuitive. I think that's really cool that it can do that. Uh, and it had no problem, it flew itself completely. Um, you will see a couple of times you'll see me like kind of looking and checking on it because I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to fly into anything. But honestly, with the omnidirectional obstacle avoidance that this has, along with the active tracking, it's very intuitive and smart. Um, so I honestly think you can rely on this being able to fly itself in situations where you don't have anyone to fly for you, which I think is extremely cool. And I personally love the omnidirectional sensing that this has. My Mavic Air 2 didn't really have that, and I ended up flying into a tree. And that was one of the big selling points on this drone is I love that there was that safety feature built into it so I would not lose it when I went to go and fly it. Now, in terms of the different focal lengths, the 24 millimeter can shoot in D-Log, which is the flattest profile that you can shoot in. That's gonna give you the most dynamic range when it comes to color grading your footage. So you're gonna get the most detail in your shadows and your highlights. Um, and I think that profile is hands down the best one to use. Uh, the 70 millimeter can shoot in only D-Log M. It can't shoot in D-Log and the 166 millimeter can only shoot in the normal profile. And when I was initially buying this drone, I didn't think that it was gonna make as big of a difference as I thought. And I was thinking, okay, well, at least uh, the 70 millimeter can shoot in D-Log M. That's still like a flat profile, maybe it won't be as bad. Well, when I try to copy and paste my color grades from the same exact areas with the different focal lengths from the 24 to the 70 millimeter, the D-Log to the D-Log M profile is actually uh, significantly more different than I thought it was going to be. Um, if I pasted my color grade onto the D-Log M profile from D-Log, it would end up becoming a lot more contrasty and punchy and there wasn't as much to play with before the image would start falling apart. So, I definitely would recommend shooting in D-Log M if you're wanting a consistent grade between your footage. Um, obviously, if you can just use D-Log and you only need the 24 millimeter focal length, I would shoot in D-Log all day. But if you do need those different focal lengths for projects, I would shoot in D-Log M because it is hard to get those color grades to match up between the D-Log and the D-Log M profiles. Now the normal profile, that one, I. It kind of stinks, honestly, that you can only use a normal profile on the 166 millimeter because the baked, I didn't really enjoy the baked in look that the normal profile had. Personally, I know some people really like the way the normal one looks and depending on the projects you're doing, I'm sure it is more than enough. But for someone like me who really likes to manipulate my image and push it uh, to give it the most filmic look that I possibly can, I'm not a huge fan of that when it comes to the 166 millimeter. Now, what I am a fan of, of the 166 millimeter lens is the compression that you can get and how close you can get to your subjects. Now, I flew my drone in the same exact spot and I took videos and pictures of each different focal length from the same exact spot. And I was honestly shocked 
how far the 166 millimeter focal length can actually get you to your subject compared to the 24 millimeter focal length. I was honestly so impressed with how much detail you could get with the 166 millimeter focal length and how far it actually allows you to zoom into your subject from being that high in the sky. I think that's really invaluable, especially for someone who is trying to be a little bit more discreet, especially if you're shooting like wildlife or something like that. Being able to fly up high in the air and still be able to capture your subject at a close distance. I hope that DJI will eventually um, either upgrade the lens or maybe a future software update would be fantastic to give it a flatter color profile. I don't know if that'll happen, that's wishful thinking, but that would be amazing to be able to manipulate that color grid and get a little bit more dynamic range out of that sensor in general. But especially for scoping things out um, and being able to fly a little bit more discreet, it is really, really cool to have. I love the compression that you get from the 166 millimeter lens. It really makes your subject pop off of the background. I don't think I'm gonna use it as much as I initially thought I was going to because of only being able to shoot in that normal standard color profile. We'll see, I'm still testing it out and um, we'll see what what DJI does in the future with that one. But either way, I still think the Mavic 3 Classic is 1749 with the RC controller and the RC controller bundle with the Mavic 3 Pro is 2199. I don't think that's a huge uh, difference in cost to be able to get the added benefit of the two additional lenses. So I still think the Mavic 3 Pro is definitely the one to go with over the Mavic 3 Classic personally. I just don't think I'll be using the 166 millimeter lens as much as I initially thought I was going to after my testing. Now the 70 millimeter focal length lens, that one is Beautiful. I do think that is probably going to be the one that I use the most. Uh, besides when I'm doing my establishing shots, I will probably use my 24 millimeter then because that's going to give me the best dynamic range. You still have the D-Log M color profile, which allows you to get a little bit of a flatter profile and get a little bit more dynamic range in your image but you also get the compression that the 70 millimeter has that the 24 millimeter does not. You would get all the bells and whistles that you would want out of the 70 millimeter lens. Now, it can only shoot in 4K in the 70 millimeter lens. The 24 millimeter lens can shoot in 5.1K, um, which I guess that, that is nice to have. I personally don't have a super big use case for that, but if you needed to shoot in 5.1K, that would give you a little bit more cropping real estate on a 4K timeline so you could actually zoom into your image without having any resolution loss which that could come in handy um, for sure but the 70 millimeter lens when I was riding my one wheel getting that tracking uh, and a little bit more compression allowed me to get a little bit closer to my subject without having to fly the drone directly in their face and also get that compression of separating you off of the background so personally, I think the 70 millimeter lens is my favorite focal length. All in all, I think the DJI Mavic 3 Pro is a fantastic drone. I think that the three lens camera system on this is fantastic. Having the three different focal lengths on here, the 24 millimeter, the 70 millimeter, and the 166 millimeter makes this one of the most versatile drones that you can get, especially for the price. I mean, if you wanted to get a drone that had multiple lenses on it before, you'd have to get something like the DJI Inspire, or you would have to fly something like a drone that can hold a cinema rig or something like that on there. So something this compact, this convenient, that you have these different focal length options on, you can't really beat it, especially for the price. So I appreciate you guys sticking around. We'll see you in the next one.